Unreal Engine 5 and its full version is now publicly available to developers and importantly, the Matrix Awakens city demo, including metahuman crowds, large-scale AI, and the large coordinate world system can be compiled and played by anyone who is just passingly curious. With this demo today on PC, I will spend some time examining the specifics of the PC version, how it differs from previous releases of UE5, what visual differences there are in comparison to the console versions, and how it performs, which is definitely a talking point for sure. But before I get into any of the performance metrics, we should really talk about what makes this PC City sample of UE5 so special. A great part of this sample is the demonstration of core UE5 technologies and one of the hardest things to render, a modern city. Previous demos had been very limited, linear, uniform, mainly rocky landscapes. Cities have nuances like materials, shapes, and forms, and a level of dynamism that are much more complex to simulate. The city sample for UE5 shows how it will handle these things. First, you have nanite geometry, which gives even the smallest things in the city exuberant amounts of detail. You can marvel at a bag of crisps, you can gawk at the weaved mesh of a fence, or you could wax poetical about the virtues of chipped paint and cast iron doodads. Truly, the city sample has some of the most impressive individual assets we've seen at Digital Foundry. It has incredible detail, but some areas of nanite are still in active research and development. Characters still use normal meshes and not nanite, and nanite has yet to be used in a convincing way for foliage. But here I must interject about some findings by Twitter user Dylan Brown that were confirmed by UE5 developer Graham Willidall, namely that nanite being used for foliage and even more is in early production, which is great to hear, as the solution shall be fascinating should and when it come out. Another upgrade in UE5 that the city demo shows is the usage of hardware triangle ray tracing for lumen diffuse global illumination and lumen reflections. To check this out, I compiled a version of the demo that only uses software lumen so that I could look at the differences in visuals and performance, but immediately they aren't completely obvious. As you can see here in the opening section, both hardware and software lumen look really, really similar. That is because this is a relatively open area with not a lot of complex overlapping or concave geometry, kind of similar conditions to those that we saw in Valley of the Ancients. So the less precise software mode can capture a similar visual quality to the hardware mode. But if you look at the details, they're quite different, specifically reflections. Hardware Lumen traces against geometric versions of the game scene. So characters like you can see here can show up in the reflection while moving. Similarly, you can see how Hardware Lumen can capture the lighting in the scene around you more accurately. Software Lumen in this shot here thinks the scene is still in direct sunlight, so the reflection has improper lighting in it. Hardware Lumen, on the other hand, realizes that this area is in fact really only lit by the sky. On top of this, Hardware Lumen traces much further into the distance, visible here of course, but also visible in this like-for-like -like shot, where buildings reflected into the distance go much further with Hardware Lumen, on top of those buildings being lit and shadowed in a much more detailed and obvious way. They don't look so amorphous anymore. This difference in accuracy is really obvious here with finer details. The tree in the plaza here looks much better with hardware lumen. It's no longer puffy and almost textureless looking like it is in the software lumen view. And if you notice, you can also see how global illumination is visible in the reflection in hardware lumen, which I think looks really cool. For diffuse lighting, the difference can be stark depending upon how much overlapping geometry there is. If the object is concave, like this shipping container is, then software lumen has trouble with it, shading the inside of it incorrectly. You can also have larger differences in those areas where software lumen leans on screen space lighting, like here at this angle where we can see light leaking through in the software mode with this line here. But the biggest difference happens at night, where nearly all the emissive lighting in software lumen is only captured in screen space. So so as you move the camera through the world, you can see a fuzzy, dark, and ever-changing degree of lighting, and there's essentially no lighting in the distance. In comparison, hardware lumen looks rather different. Lighting works accurately, even at great distances, as you can see with this building's lighting and reflection here. Lighting is no longer inconsistent and dark, like you can see under this underpass. So hardware lumen offers a more robust, accurate, 
version of the scene lighting that captures more dynamic objects. How does it perform though in comparison? Well here we get into the interesting quagmire of measuring performance in this city sample, which is not easy. First you have PSO or shader compilation issues, so stutters that will happen for a long time after you load up the sample for the first time, which you can see here on a Core i9-10900K, 720p high, hardware lumen. Big stutters that I'm sure everyone has seen in videos across the web, and that is often found in unpolished Unreal Engine releases. They definitely give a very bad first impression. After those clear up though, you will still be left with an incredibly CPU limited sample scene, which you can see on the right here. There's a CPU limited average of 44 FPS, and it can be even much lower if you drive around the scene in a car or move the camera at high speeds. Those will induce frame time spikes of their own that are not coming from shader compilation. Some of the origins of that CPU limitation can be illustrated really well by looking at the difference in performance of software lumen versus hardware lumen. We can see that both are heavy on the CPU when CPU limited, but hardware lumen is on average 32% slower on the CPU in my measurement. The reason I think is obvious as now there's a BVH maintenance being done on the CPU with hardware lumen, but still that's not the only reason why this is so expensive. AI and draw calls are expensive here as well. We can get a sense of this by turning off that AI, parked cars and vehicles. Here the CPU limit is more reasonable, but still hardware lumen shows how expensive it is on the CPU here, being nearly 40% slower than software lumen in the same circumstance. Adding on to this is how single threaded Unreal Engine 5 appears to be in this city sample. Here I'm running the same area with the same settings and config, but I have done two things. On the far left, I have decreased the CPU clock by half. In the middle, I've kept the clock the same, but reduced the thread count to half. On the right, I have full threads and full clocks. There's some important scaling behavior to note. Half frequency with all the threads runs 40% slower than the full deal. Half the threads, though, only runs 4% slower on average than the full deal. Basically, this means that the demo scales more intensely with processor frequency than it does the amount of CPU cores and threads. This implies that the city sample is limited by single threaded performance. 20 threads are essentially running the same as 10 threads. As a result, measuring GPU performance is not easy in the city sample. I had to turn off AI to get cleaner numbers. In doing so, I could see that hardware lumen is roughly 7% slower on an RTX 2060 Super in this shot here when running 4K TSR internally at 1080p. I found a similar 7% on the RTX 3080 and on the RX 6800 XT from AMD, I measured hardware lumen being 17% slower on average then software lumen. Compared to one another at high settings at 4K, the RX 6800 XT was around 3% slower on average than the RTX 3080, and at epic settings at 4K, the 6800 XT was around 10% slower. This is quite the reversal of the situation I found in UE5 Early Access, where the RTX 3080 there was around 10% slower than the RX 6800 XT back when using software ray tracing. Speaking of that ray tracing, I have to mention how I found some glitches and missing things in the ray trace reflections on AMD, like how our main character's torso is missing in the reflection here. I also should note that I would have loved to have done more dynamic GPU testing with camera movement and such, but as I have shown, moving the camera around means I'm basically benching the CPU and not the GPUs. Given that CPU limitation, how does this run at all on mid-range PCs, let alone on the similarly mid-range consoles? Well, on PC, if you're decked out with a mid-range CPU like the Ryzen 5 3600 shown here, you're going to be severely CPU limited if you try out this city sample in its default form, averaging around 30 FPS when sitting still, but running much worse than that in movement. On consoles represented by the PlayStation 5 here, we can see areas where cuts are made to help improve that performance. For one, there's image resolution. The amount of image breakup in the reconstructed image on PlayStation 5 tends to be worse than the same image reconstructed up to 4K from 1080p on PC. This implies either that the PS5 in this opening scene here is sub 1080p internally, or that the TSR quality on console is worse than the default TSR quality on PC. To help keep frame rate up in motion, consoles also reduce motion blur resolution to quarter, which is visible when the camera spins or when objects moves, as a blocky breakup of the image. Then there are other changes. Reflection distance 
and general internal resolution is consistent with PC set to high, yet there are moments of light leak, like here on this car wheel here, not found on PC, which imply different roughness biases and other optimizations on console not present on PC's high setting. And lastly, there's the virtual shadow map quality, which is lower than PC's high and PC medium, showing visible shadow resolution edges in the shadow map there that I was able to match more or less by applying a custom half resolution bias to the VSM directional shadows. Even with these optimizations on console, the city sample is struggling there, much like we're seeing on PC, filled with stutters and frame time spikes when moving across the game world that based upon our testing on PC indicate that the PlayStation 5, for example, here, much like Xbox Series X and Series S, is having CPU limited performance issues in this city sample. After all this testing, I'm fascinated with my first glimpse here at UE5 on PC with the city sample. The quality of the rendering is superb, and if we look at console versus PC, we can see some large strides in performance and visual quality. But CPU performance on PC has me rather concerned. The demo is rather CPU limited below 60 FPS, even on monster CPUs. There is some context here that is important. Drivers are not mature for UE5 yet. This is just a demo sample and not a finished product, but even with those things Things being said, there are some areas that definitely are going to need some improvement, specifically with how the demo scales most with CPU frequency and how a 5 core 10 thread processor performs much the same as a 10 core 20 thread processor. In the PC space, CPUs have a lot of threads and cores sometimes double or triple the amount that are available on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 for developers. Yet all these extra cores and threads are not helping performance in a meaningful way at the moment based upon this city sample. This makes me a little bit nervous about how 60 FPS is going to be attainable in future UE5 releases unless something is radically changed. But that is all I can really say for now. If you did like this little investigative video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to help us out, support TF on Patreon to get access to our video content in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me, write a comment below or follow on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.